Ramblin' Rec came to Georgia Tech's campus in 1961, uh, due in large part to the efforts of Dean Dull, who was the Dean of Students at the time. During the late 1950s, Dull had been looking for a symbol to kind of unify the Georgia Tech community, something that harkened back to our engineering past, and then also something that would serve as a physical presence on Georgia Tech's campus, as this was before Buzz and before the Yellow Jacket really became the mascot. And we try to make it to every Georgia Tech official event, so definitely convocation and graduation were always there, because it is the student's mascot, and we try to make it available for students to see it. And there's a couple other traditions that are more specific to the drivers, uh, and the, probably the most famous or the most well-known is that um, each driver uh, replaces uh, three parts on the car, and those are the only three parts that really change from year to year. Um, the three are the, uh, the pennants in the front. They always say to hell with Georgia and give them hell tech. The hood ornament, which is for me, it's a quail, but it's, there's a couple other ones that you can choose from. And then also the, uh, the running boards on the side, which are the silver plates. Uh, and so each driver keeps those um, as kind of a memento from all the appearances and all the events that uh, he or she goes to. One of my favorite memories was actually uh, getting the chance to meet up with Congressman Phil Gingry. I and mean, he actually uh, was one of the drivers in 1963. You know, it really made my day when he walked out of the front of his office and he saw the Ramblin' Rex sitting there. And, you know, we took him for a ride around Marietta. We took it to his house and he showed his wife and everything like that. And he was just so enthralled to see it. And it really made my time uh, as driver so far, at least. Let's welcome America's favorite mascot, Buzz. When I was Buzz, one of the things that I remembered that some of my favorite moments, one was I think I could s safely say that I start, started the crowd surfing. And that was really a, a, a wild feeling, just totally trusting all the Georgia Tech fans and surfing up the stands and hoping somebody was going to catch you when you got to the top and send you back down. That was certainly a favorite memory of mine. And a second favorite memory would have been standing in the middle of Grant Field when the wave was really popular and getting to lead the wave and watch the wave as it went all the way around Grant Field. When I look back, certainly when I was Buzz in 1981, it was Buzz's, it was only a second year, so there wasn't a lot of history. When I look back now and think after 30 Buzzes almost, it seems like, um, I really think back and say, wow, I was really part of something. It makes me very proud. I wished I could have really appreciated more at the time. I just know at the time I had a great amount of fun. But basically being Buzz, just it was the total embodiment of my tech experience. It was um, traveling with the cheerleaders and always being at every basketball game, every football game. And um, I, I just can't imagine having the tech experience not having had done that. Uh, anytime you get in the Buzz costume, it, it's going to be memorable for one reason or another. And uh, a lot of the time it has to do with after the costume comes off and the next morning you wake up and you end up with all these mystery injuries, uh, the bruises on your shins and knees and back, anything that you may have run into while you're in costume. So you can't help but uh, enjoy the fun that comes with all the uh, adventure that you have in that costume. Uh, I believe it started, in, and I could be corrected, but... Uh, Dr. Richie Bland, obviously not a doctor at the time when he was a student at Georgia Tech, but I think it was 1978. If I remember the story right, his, his sister was a UGA student, and while he had gone to visit his older sister at school, someone gave him a hard time being a Georgia Tech student, saying that you know, our mascot was a car, and, he, and, and so he took it upon himself to come up with a very first Buzz costume, had it made, and he started streaking some Georgia Tech events, and all the students were wondering, you know, who is this guy? And it, and it picked up. It took a year or two before it became something more official. Probably the, the most memorable experience in the whole career I had while I was dressed up was um, an alignment that, that happened because I had started to jump out of airplanes in the Georgia Tech Parachute Club. Um, started that my freshman year and then not too long after getting in the club and, and learning how to skydive and getting, getting a license to do that, um, I was selected to, uh, to start dressing as Buzz. And of course, the moment that those two things happened, I thought, I've got to do it. I don't know how, but I'm going to jump out of a plane in that costume. I ended up making three jumps onto the campus in 96 and 97. Uh, the first one was into the baseball stadium, brought in a game ball, landed right around second base and ran into home plate. And then the second was the inauguration of the big green field over by the uh, student athletic complex. And the last one in uh, something like October, November of 97, we did the the final Bobby Dodd jump. I actually jumped uh, out of a plane about four or 5,000 feet and landed right in the middle of Bobby Dodd, jettisoned the parachute, ran into the goalpost, came back and spiked the football that I was carrying. So that made it onto, I think, ABC Sports. It was, uh, it was pretty neat, pretty neat memory from, uh, from not only being buzzed, but here at Tech. I don't think anyone's ever going to try that again. <laughs> 
Sideways was actually taken care of by one of the custodial employees, a man named Renfro. And of course, the dog was fed far more than any dog could possibly have eaten. And I'm surprised that we didn't attract every stray dog in the neighborhood. It's <laughs> but he was a funny little dog who actually did walk sideways, and hence his name, and uh, became the pet of the Naval ROTC, and uh, has uh, shown up in several legends. Most of the time he spent around a bookstore, because there were a lot of students there, and they come out with stuff, and they'd feed him, so he was pretty smart. He was some sort of small terrier dog, and he actually ran sideways. He, he ran like he, like an automobile that's been knocked out of line. He he ran sideways, and we called him sideways. And he lived on the campus, and I don't know where, particularly, but he was there, and he'd greet you walking up the steps in towards the administration building from North Avenue down by the football field. During my years at Georgia Tech, um, there was some um, talk about Bruin, but he certainly wasn't talked about that much. By the time I got there, um, we didn't really much know about the history of Bruin the Bear. So George P. Burdell, I've heard he's been on campus pretty, pretty actively recently. Definitely I've seen him out uh, doing construction, uh, you know, over uh, near, the, uh, near the stadium, near the AMC in those renovations. I also heard from some, um, some guys at Facet that he's a major donor at the University of Georgia Law School. They have a program apparently of him on there. Yeah, when, as a tech student, I certainly remember all the many rumors about George P. Burdell. I guess the most common was that he found a way to be registered for most every class and certainly go through the graduation ceremony every, every year. It's really, I guess, growing as a, a nice um, underground joke for all the uh, Georgia Tech alumni to you know, be at a sporting event or even the Super Bowl and, and hear over the PA system someone paging George P. Burdell. Um, that, uh, that's just got to put a, a little smirk on your face and I certainly would love to have Buzz uh, be raised up to that kind of national notoriety um, but I think everyone thinks of it as, as just a fun, spastic, little creative character, and, and uh, I was happy to certainly dress in those, those shoes while I was here. As you will believe, a yellow jacket can fly. 